I'm Sven Gustafsson, and you're listening to Daily Detroit, where we share what to know and where to go in Southeast Michigan. And I'm Jer Stays. It's December 12th, and I have done none of my Christmas shopping yet. Let's dive in after a word from our episode sponsor. Jer, I don't even start worrying about Christmas shopping for another week or two. And you got kids. I take, I take usually one, maybe two days to get all my shopping done. Daily Detroit is brought to you in part by Milo Digital. Milo Digital is a full-service digital marketing agency that engineers quality results through data and innovative strategies. Learn more at milodetroit.com. In Michigan, drug overdoses kill more people than traffic and gun deaths combined. Nearly 2,700 people died from overdoses in 2017. And more than 1,900 of those deaths were because of opioids. That's according to data from the state and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The numbers are staggering as we zoom in to Metro Detroit, too. The Michigan counties that topped the overdose death chart are Wayne with 571 and Macomb with 286. And here's something interesting and scary. Remember that 2700 number I told you at the top of the story? Well, there were just 115 drug overdose deaths as recently as 1999. But since then... There are now 115 opioid prescriptions being written for every 100 people, with more than 11 million prescriptions for the painkillers written in 2015. To help deal with this, there's a new public-private project called the Michigan Opioid Partnership. It's made up of the state's Department of Health and Human Services and funders, including the Community Foundation for Southeast Michigan. The idea is to make up to $2.6 million available to support medication-assisted treatment for both in the emergency room when someone's in crisis and long-term medication and behavioral therapy. The new partnership will invite hospitals and organizations from counties across the state to apply for funding. The grants will be awarded next year. Michigan is beating Ohio, this time for getting a headquarters of a company to move here. Automotive tooling company Tooling Technology LLC, founded in 1982, will relocate its headquarters to Macomb Township from Fort Laramie, Ohio. It's a nearly $20 million project, and it'll create 100 jobs in Michigan. They'll get a $750,000 performance-based grant from the state. Macomb Township is throwing in a 50% property tax abatement in support of the project. If you're looking for a job at Tooling Technology... The website is toolingtechgroup.com slash locations. In downtown Detroit, the Green Room Salad Bar says it's found a new home after being evicted from the Ford building on Congress back in the spring. After many months of searching, we are excited to announce we have found the perfect new home, the eatery wrote on Facebook. The Guardian building welcomes the Green Room to reopen its doors in early 2019. Long a popular lunchtime spot for the 9 to 5 crowd, the Green Room has been without a home since its lease was terminated by the owners of the Ford Building, effective in April. It first opened on Congress Street in 1996. The business is owned by Steve Zaccaro, who also owns the Lunchbox Deli in Gross Point Park. Ferndale restaurant The Conserva says it's planning to close after two years in business. In a Facebook post, the restaurant says it'll celebrate its two-year anniversary on its last night of service on Saturday, December 22nd. Owner and chef Matthew Baldridge, in a Facebook post, cited what he called extenuating circumstances in our families for the closure, adding, quote, it won't be reasonable for us to continue running Conserva to its full potential. Baldridge opened the Conserva in 2016 in the space formerly occupied by the much-vaunted Torino. He previously worked as executive chef at Cliff Bell's and in the kitchen at the Rattlesnake Club. He also worked for a time with the owners of the short-lived Atomic Chicken. The Conserva's concept features a chef-driven rotating menu of shareable dishes based on a European food preservation technique. There's also new art every month on the walls. The restaurant says its goal is to come back stronger than ever when the time is right. I had really good carrots there one time. The House of Vans Pop-Up Festival is coming to Detroit for a four-day stretch January 24th through the 27th. The festival will mix live music, a street market, art exhibitions and workshops, skateboarding clinics, and an indoor skate park. Detroit rapper Danny Brown and Ferndale rockers Proto Martyr join the bands Thundercat, Amber Mark, Joyce Manor, and Kelsey Liu on different nights at the Jefferson School on Selden in the Lower's Cass Corridor. 
The street market will feature local artists, designers, and brands, including well-known names like Third Man Records and Ann Arbor electronic music label Ghostly International. Here are the details you need to know before you go. The event will be free with an RSVP. If you're under 18, you'll need a legal guardian to be present and sign a waiver to enter the skate park. Vans is also trying to involve local musicians to be part of the pop-up, which the company says is its biggest pop-up festival to date. More information is at houseofvans.com. And Sven, I know how you like you some Proto Martyr. Oh, absolutely. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm thinking about taking my kids down actually because they're uh, my youngest is actually like a budding skateboarder. Listeners to this show know that Detroit's food and booze scene have been growing like crazy as of late. So much so, it now has its own award show. That's the Golden Jigger, a creation of Nick Britsky of Nick Drinks fame. The winners are a who's who of hospitality around Detroit. Best whiskey program at this year's Golden Jigger went to the Sugar House in Corktown. Best wine program? The Royce in downtown Detroit. Named the best high-volume bar was the Skip, which is in the Belt in downtown Detroit. And best beer program went to Ferndale's One-Eyed Betty's. There were many other winners. We'll link to the rest of them in the show notes. Meanwhile, Jer chatted with Nick Britsky and his companion, Booze Bunny, outside the Willis Show Bar about the project and how it came about. So first, could you uh, say and spell your name? Uh, My name is Booze Bunny. It's B-O-O-Z-E-B-U-N-N-Y. Does that ever change depending on the number of an amount of inebriation you have? <laughs> it it's, it's changes often, daily basis, essentially. And then, of course? Nick Britsky, N-I-C-K-B-R-I-T-S-K-Y. Catching up with everyone here outside of the Willis Show Bar just at the end of the first Golden Jigger Awards. Woo! Hey, we made it. Right, you got you got it done. Great crowd. I mean, you got a full bar. Uh, people came in from across the industry. How do you feel about this award and what it does for Detroit? Well, it's really recognizing all the great work that happens. You know, certainly I saw a lot of uh, different awards that were happening that were from one publication or from one organization. What I want to do is get all those organizations together, get the public, and then get Nick Drinks to lead it. So we had this nice average to really get a great representation of who the best of the best is. Oh, yes. It shines just a great light on Detroit and everything cool that's happening in the city. It's such a wide range of stuff from all over the city, from the suburbs to downtown. All the cool things that are just happening that's really interesting in the drinking culture. So, uh, pretty good for a rabbit. Um, Right. So, how did these nominees come to be? So, largely the nominees were people that I had a, a good feel for. So, I did kind of pick them. I ran them by a couple friends in the industry to make sure I wasn't too far off base, but I w- it was pretty close. And so, at that point, then we brought in the public and the experts to vote on them. Uh, is there anyone that you are really glad won, or is there any specific story that you were glad to get highlighted tonight? Well, I was really nervous I was going to have to be the tiebreaker. And when I got all the numbers and put them on the paper, it was very definitive. In fact, when you heard the crowd cheer... Nine times out of ten, whoever was cheered the loudest won. So it was a good representation. And that one time was a was an ogre. It was, who won it was it. local. Yeah. It was a Willis. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course they're going to cheer for their own yeah, bar, yeah. right? No, you got all the house. They're staff. great. They're wonderful. Yes. They're wonderful. Yeah. They were great hosts, and all the sponsors that helped us make this possible. I mean, we dropped way more money than I thought was possible, but we managed to break pretty dang close to even. <laughs> <laughs> as long as the party pays for itself, That's right? Right. Yes, exactly. That's right. <laughs> so to give people a little bit of an idea, what exactly is Nick drinks? What are you trying to do? So it started off as kind of my journey through alcohol, and then... <laughs> I believe that's called alcoholism, Nick. Oh, yes. But if you do There's, it... There's uh, 12 steps that usually help you out with that, Nick, but, yeah, on a journey through your alcohol. Apparently, step one is starting an award show. <laughs> we learned from Mythbusters, it's, it's, it's goofing around if you don't write it down. Hence, Nick Drinks became science of watching the cocktail culture. <laughs> and so, as I did more and more, I started talking to the public, a lot of the people that came to this event, and they're like, I've never heard of that. Like, people that I brought in, even my crew, had never heard of Willis Show Bar. So to show off the great things that are happening in Detroit to the public just gives a bigger megaphone for everyone. Well, and that just blows my mind because the Willis Show Bar has such a great history. They've been sitting vacant for a while, but they've done a great job bringing that place back. I mean, it's just gorgeous in there. It's beautiful. It was, uh, you walked in here and you just go, wow, this is so cool. It's so neat. It just, it's beautiful. You just want to come back to an actual, actual show here. It's wonderful. Our, our 720p super grainy Facebook video does not do it justice. <laughs> this place is beautiful in here. The plaster work, the lighting, uh, the bar staff is great. This is really a gem and deserved to be nominated for the best bar in Detroit. So where can people find all your stuff? 
You can go to nickdrinks.com and find more about it. Um, this was the last show of the season. We do have a TV show on high-quality public access TV. <laughs> it's, it's Wayne's World with Booze. Yeah. So um, we'll be back next season, Monday nights, and you can find us to see when we uh, get the shenanigans and figure out what Booze Bunny's trouble gets into. There are many troubles, many issues, and uh, we'll be around next year. I do appreciate how Jer is miking the Muppet, and Paul is still operating the Muppet during the radio fully, interview. Fully devoted to my character here. I've made many choices as an actor <laughs> and performer as going to Puppet Juilliard, and I am sticking with every single one of them. Well, it's last call for today's episode. If you like what you're hearing on Daily Detroit, tell a friend. It's the best way to grow the show and ensure we can keep this train on the tracks. I'm Sven Gustafson. And I'm Jer Stays. Thanks for listening, take care of each other, and we'll see you around Detroit. You're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information.